So this is going to be an evening about uh, real-time communication. And uh, whenever I say real-time communication, um, it's a fact that I'm lying because we don't know real-time communication. Um, so when I say real-time communication, I in fact mean near real-time communication because that's simply the best that we can do uh, in the cloud. Um, so this is actually a clickbait. It says a forget SignalR, which is not actually true. Uh, but the clickbait works because I'm here. Um, but um, today I'm going to tell you um, a little bit about uh, Azure Web Pops Up, um, which is basically very much comparable with SignalR. So we're going to dive a little bit into the differences bete between the two. Um, and in the end, I will show you how uh, Web Pops Up works and how you can take advantage of the service uh, as it is in Azure. So this is me, the best picture I could find. Um, I'm a cloud solution architect at a company called 4.net, uh, uh, and we basically do um, Azure Cloud and uh, .NET um, uh, yeah, art, um, architecture stuff. So uh, I'm a consultant. You can hire me if you want. Uh, I'm also the organizer of uh, .NET Friday, which is also a meetup um, in uh, Nieuwegein, Utrecht, and I happen to be uh, a Microsoft MVP for, uh, for Azure. <laughs> So, um, before I start my demo and uh, start uh, uh, the majority of the slides today, I would like you uh, to grab your uh, cell phone or whatever uh, mobile device you have and go to this URL, uh, or um, obviously uh, uh, scan the, U the QR code, which will bring you to the same URL. And if I'm correct, that will bring you to, oh, sorry. Oh, 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 yeah, there you are. If I'm correct, that will bring you to uh, a website with a question. So did you do any uh, real-time communication yet? Um, and as Microsoft always does, the uh, possible answer options are yes, no, and maybe. So everyone, yeah, I see some votes coming in. So um, what you see is a solution that I created with Azure Web Pops Up. So um, uh, this is basically uh, a mechanism that's, uh, uh, there's a mechanism that I use to identify you as a unique user. So you can go ahead and click whatever vote you want. And if I'm correct, then um, it won't see your vote as a new unique vote, but it will actually uh, identify you as a unique user and then change the vote. So you will be able to change uh, this, um, uh, pie chart a little bit, and even uh, if I go to this um, awesome backend system, I can uh, control your phone, uh, your your uh, mobile devices, and push a new uh, question to your device. So now there's a new question. So if you ever did any real-time uh, work before, what was uh, the technology that you used? So um, I think. By far the most popular is uh, SignalR and maybe uh, Socket.io, uh, but obviously uh, there's also uh, Ably because Mark is here, and uh, there's the service that we're going to talk about, which is Web Pops Up, and the other option is no, I didn't do any real-time stuff. So I see that uh, the majority says no, uh, and SignalR, and there's about, yeah, let's say 25% uh, uh, between Ably and uh, oh no, uh, between Ably and Socket.io. Ab, ab, that, that has to be you. So, okay, um, now I know my audience a little bit, so let's just dig into the service and see um, uh, what it can bring us. Um, but first of all, this slide. Um, so the title of my presentation is Forget SignalR uh, and then getting to know um, Azure Web Pops Up. But in fact, I, I already said that uh, SignalR and Pops Up aren't in fact um, the same services. In Azure, they are very different services. Um, they somewhat use the same infrastructure, underlying infrastructure, um, but they are and for uh, a certain amount of time will be two separate services in Azure. So, um, what is the difference? Well, David Fowler says, um, there is not much different because the underlying infrastructure, the tech below, is, um, uh, is very much the same. But the difference is 
the way that you communicate with the service. So if you ever used SignalR before, you probably know that uh, SignalR has a couple of fallback scenarios. So the primary way of connecting to this service is using a WebSocket. So if you have a website and you run that website in um, a modern browser, you will be able to connect to a real-time service, to SignalR, uh, with a library that comes with SignalR, and it will try to connect uh, using a WebSocket. But if your browser is not modern enough, uh, it will use fallback scenarios. So there's a couple of fallback scenarios, uh, forever frame, long polling, and a different one if you're using Internet Explorer 6. Um, so the, the advantage of SignalR is that, it, that you somewhat have, um, um, that you're somewhat sure that the connection will succeed. If you use a web pops up, then uh, the only thing that you need to use is the web, uh, a, a web socket. But luckily, it's 2023, so we all use modern browsers, so the majority of the browsers uh, will be able to connect uh, using a web, uh, web socket. So now the obvious question, when do I need to go for a SignalR solution or when do I need to go for a web pops up solution? Do I need to switch to web pops up if I already have a SignalR solution? Well, the answer is no, uh, because basically the underlying infrastructure is the same and you won't experience that much of a problem uh, if you stay with SignalR because the, the service will for sure remain in Azure. Uh, it, it will be maintained so there's no, me no need to move away from that. Um, but there are a couple of advantages if you want to start using a real-time scenario um, to use web pops up. Um, and I think personally uh, that these, uh, this sub-protocol uh, is one very powerful uh, thing that, that comes with uh, web pops up because that allows you to do uh, uh, a little bit more magic than you're used to when you use uh, uh, SignalR. So, how does a WebSocket work? If you have a browser uh, and you have a web pops up service in the cloud, uh, a WebSocket will create a connection between the two and the connection will, be, will, will remain open. So that allows you to send information from a server to a client without having the client to send a request. So, what, we, what we're used to when, we, when we're creating a website is that someone at a browser uh, uh, types in a URL, hits enter, and that will, in the background, create a request. That, re that request will be sent to the server, the server will process the request and come up with a response and return the response to the browser. But sometimes you have a background process somewhere on the server and you, you just want to push some information to the client. For example, if you have a large uh, import process, you want to import a huge file, you allow the client to upload the file, and you tell it to import the system, but it takes an hour. You don't want this client to sit and wait uh, on his website for this whole hour um, for the process to complete. So you want to do that in a background process. On the other hand, you do want to notify whenever the process is finished or failed or whatever. You want to send something back. And that is where uh, such a mechanism as uh, uh, web pops up, but other real-time uh, mechanisms as well, uh, come into play because now you can initiate sending messages to the client without having to have the re that request up front. Does that make sense? Questions on that? Okay, let's go. So if you have a, a, um, a web pops up service and a lot of clients, and all these clients are connected to that web pops up service, it allows you to, for example, when one client sends a message to the web pops up service, it allows you to duplicate and spread out the message to all the other clients. So, for example, if you imagine that you're in a website, in a chat website, and someone enters a message, you can send that message to web pops up, spread it out, and everyone in the chat room will receive and will be able to read the message without having to have uh, without having to refresh the website or do a uh, request to, um, to the server. So, uh, now this is the, 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 let's say, easiest way to send messages using WebPubSub. Uh, there are more ways that you can use 
uh, to target messages. So uh, the previous example targeted, uh, targets everyone. So that's the last one in, uh, in the bullet list, all. Um, but once you connect to a web app so from a client, you will receive a unique ID. And you can use this ID to target a message to that specific connection. What you can also use is, for example, use a uh, 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 user ID to identify a certain user. And then when the user is connected with multiple devices, so you, you know, imagine that you have a system where you need to log in, you can identify this user, but now he logs in on his laptop and on his phone. This is the same user. And you can use that user uh, ID to target messages to that specific user. So the message will end up on his mobile phone and on his laptop. Then there's also a mechanism called groups. Um, there's no need to create uh, a group. If you make someone a member of the group and the group doesn't exist, it will be created for you in the background. And as soon as the last member of a group leaves, the group will magically dis disappear. And then the last one, we already saw that, that's all. Then you target everyone who is connected to the, uh, to the service. So how does a group work? Um, in this example, I have two groups, group A and group B, um, and there's a message all the way in the bottom left uh, which targets groups, uh, group A. So the message is sent to WebPubSub and WebPubSub will magically understand that the message needs to arrive in everyone um, who is uh, addressed in, um, uh, in group A. Now you can be a member of multiple groups. So there's no need to make a huge amount of groups to, to be able to uh, uh, target uh, users in, I don't know, whatever complicated way. Uh, you can make uh, users a member of multiple groups. So, and now the advantages of uh, web pubs up is the underlying sub protocols. And I will show you in a bit how that works. Um, but if you use those sub protocols, you can uh, subscribe and un unsubscribe to groups. Um, and you can send messages to the groups. Um, and that is only when you use this sub-protocol. So now the difference with SignalR and with web pops up is that this isn't possible with SignalR. If you want to make someone a user of a, of, of a group, you are, you're going to have to make a request to, the, to your backend system that connects with uh, SignalR um, and uh, add someone to a certain group and then it will come with a response it succeeded or not. Um, on the other hand, you can also connect with a, web, uh, with a SignalR client directly from your front end, but that comes with, uh, uh, with a lot of secrets involved and you don't want to do, want to do that. So if you want to, to directly uh, communicate with the SignalR service from your front end, you're going to first have to call a key vault or something um, to retrieve the secrets so that you can connect with the service. Uh, but then again, uh, there's no, diff no difference. You, you need to make a round trip to a service to be able to get this done. With web pops up, you don't have to do it. You can decide upfront what someone can or cannot do. So if I create a connection with web pops up, I will end up on the server creating uh, some kind of unique string um, and that comes with a, a JSON web token. And in this uh, JSON web, uh, web token, um, there is information what I as a client can do. And I can define that up front. So uh, I can identify myself as a user, and then I can, I can uh, tell to the system, okay, this is Edward, he can join every group, uh, and he can leave every group, but he can only send messages to this specific group, for example. Um, and all that information is in the JSON web token that is generated at the time that I create the connection. Does that make sense for everyone? Yeah. All right. So there are um, basically three protocols. The default is just the default one. Um, and there's two sub-protocols. One is um, a JSON sub-protocol. Obviously, that, that's the one you use when you want to communicate with JSON messages. Uh, and the other one is protobuf, which is uh, binary data. So I have a, a demo. You all joined a uh, poll mechanism, which is basically my demo. I'm going to show you how that works and how I uh, communicate with the, uh, with the service. 
Uh, and this service uses um, uh, the JSON protocol, but you can mix and match. That is not always a good idea, because if you have a connection with a, a protobuf uh, protocol and you receive a message with, with JSON, you cannot parse the message. Um, but you decide what type of protocol you want to use at the time that you create the connection. So this is just, um, well, in fact, this is TypeScript, but creating a WebSocket is native uh, JavaScript. So what you can do is create a new WebSocket to a certain URL, and that is the URL of your web pub subservice. And then uh, the second argument would be, I want to communicate with a specific uh, protocol. And if you don't do that, then you use the default one. So uh, what can you do? Um, now that we know and that the system knows that you uh, communicate in a certain way with a certain protocol, which is basically a, a some sort of handshake, okay, now I'm communicating with this JSON uh, protocol, you can send messages um, in specific structures. So for example, if I send a message to the web uh, socket that has an open connection, that looks like so, for example, join group and then the group name, or leave group and then the group name, then it will instantly join me to, a, to that specific group or leave that group of, or, or make me leave that group. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and the, uh, the egg ID that you see on, uh, on the bottom one, uh, that, uh, that's a mechanism that you can use whether or not uh, to, de to detect whether or not the message was processed by the servers. So if you send an integer there or some, some information and you receive that information back, so in this case it's number one, so if I uh, send this message to join group with an ACK uh, ID of one, uh, then the service will send a message back with ACK ID one indicating that the message is processed. So then I'm sure that this person left uh, uh, joined the group. Oh, hold on, hold on. Something magic <laughs> happens because now <laughs> Eric is going to throw the microphone. Okay. <laughs> All right, anybody here? Everyone use me? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to stand a little bit closer because my ears are bad, so. Okay, yeah, I was just asking Go if. To, the <laughs> to here? No. <laughs> yeah, it's for yeah. online. They're waving. I'm oh. sure they're waving. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was just asking if there is any security behind um, these join and leave groups, or is it just on the based on the URL? Yes, good question. So, um, I'm going to repeat the question for everyone in the room because everyone online already heard the question. So, um, is, uh, what is the security, um, is there a security issue for this when I can just join and leave groups? And the answer is yes, and the answer is in, uh, lies in this JSON web token that I just talked, about, uh, talked a little bit about. So let's just go ahead and dig into the Azure, uh, Azure portal. Um, I will show you how this works. If you want to provision uh, a web pub subservice. Um, so there is one in this resource group. Oh, yep. This resource group. Um, you just go ahead and create a web pub subservice. And the fun of the web pub, uh, web pub subservice is that there is a free version. Um, so you have to indicate this, uh, a name. This name has to be unique. Uh, it, it needs a location, and you can uh, select the pricing tier. And once again, there's a free version, uh, but it comes with a limitation. Uh, it allows up to 20 connections. So from clients, from websites, you can create up to 20 connections, and uh, then basically uh, that's, that's the limit of the free version. Uh, if you want more connections, you're going to have to go for a standard or premium version. Um, those are limited to 1,000 connections per unit. But you can scale these units. If you go for a premium version, you can scale these units automatically. So it detects, okay, now I'm at the limit of my uh, current amount of units, so I need to scale a, a, little, bit, uh, uh, a little bit up. And um, it, it scales back, uh, uh, back in when the amount of connection decreases again. Standard cannot do that. So if you, want, if you use the standard and you want to, you want to scale 
uh, the system, you're going to have to do that manually. So you can see that the portal is not really dark theme proof. Nice. So um, this is how you, how you basically um, uh, create a pub subsurface. And as you can see, I can scroll the amount of units up to uh, all the way to uh, 100. And since the amount of connections that you can create per unit is 1,000, that means that uh, a web pub sub instance can handle up to 100,000 connections. If you need more, then you need to provision uh, another service. Um, so back to my resource group, because this takes a little bit of time to, uh, to deploy, and I already have one. Uh, so this is my service. And now back to your question, um, does joining a leaving group, um, uh, is, is that safe? Is it, isn't that insecure? Well, in fact, it's insecure that I currently expose my secrets <laughs> on a public live stream, so I'm going to have to regenerate those uh, in a bit. Um, but what this system does, it makes a request to my backend service, and my backend service identifies me, or in, or in the uh, demo that you saw, you as unique users. Because once you, once you join the website, it will generate a uh, GUID, a unique uh, ID, on your device, send that ID, and now, I, uh, now everyone is, is unique, so I can identify you as users. Then you make a request to the service, and I can tell the system, okay, you want to join a certain session, um, and a session is actually a term of, the, of this demo system, so I'm going to explain a little bit about the demo system. Um, um, and then I can tell the system, you can join this session and send messages to the group of this session. And you can mimic that behavior that, that happens programmatically uh, with this URL client generator, client URL generator uh, uh, in the bottom. So uh, like with SignalR, you're going to have to create a hub that you connect to. Um, and in this case, I, I have one hub, which is uh, the Polestar hub. But let's just uh, assume that I want to connect with hub. Um, I already mentioned that you can identify uh, users as unique users. So let's just go ahead and uh, type a user ID of user ID here. Um, lifetime token, and this is where the magic happens. Because um, I want to allow certain users, do I need to scroll in a little bit? Can everyone see it all the, all the way in the back? Okay, so I can uh, decide whether or not the user that makes this connection can join or leave groups or send message to groups by just clicking this check mark. And when I click the check mark, there's a radio button that says all groups or specific groups. And in this case, I want this user to, uh, to be able to join or leave specific groups, banana, and um, apple, obviously. So now when this user creates a connection, he can only join or leave the groups banana and apple. And then when he wants to, do, uh, to, uh, to join a group pineapple, he cannot. Because I specified that he can only uh, join the groups banana and apple. If I change this radio button to the upper one, allow, and join, uh, uh, allow joining and leaving all groups, then obviously he can join all the groups that he wants. So if you want to take control of that, then this is the way to do it. And you can also do that programmatically. I will show that a little bit later. So I um, already told that this information is going to be stored in a JSON web token. So what happens if you guys go, uh, uh, go ahead and join this poll session in the demo that you saw earlier, um, I will make a request to the backend and ask the backend, can you make me uh, such a URL as, it, uh, as here below and um, add a little bit of information so that, uh, uh, so that this user can join this session group and also send messages to this session group. And that will ultimately end up in this enormous uh, URL. But if I go to jot.io, who's familiar with this website or who is not? 
everyone is. Nice. So this is a way to um, investigate information in uh, a JOL token. And this is what's in my uh, JOL token. So I want to be able to connect to uh, a specific uh, web PubSub instance to a certain hub and then it says, okay, the, an expiration date and a, the date that the token is created. But it also contains information about what this user can or cannot do. And the client will interpret that and allow you to join or leave groups only if, you are, uh, are, if, if uh, this JSON web token allows you to. Does that answer your question? I hope I don't get that much questions because answering these questions takes about 10 minutes. <laughs> Kidding. All right, so um, these are the protocols. Uh, this is where we, um, uh, where we left. So uh, sending a message to groups is pretty similar to joining and leaving groups. It's just um, that you need to conform to a certain standard um, uh, of JSON that you want to send. So the type in this case is sent to group because you want to send information to a group. Then obviously you have to specify what group. And then again, there's the, this acknowledge ID. And this no echo is interesting because it allows you to specify whether or not you also want to receive the message yourself. So if you're, you are the member of the group that you target and you uh, set echo, echo to no, you won't receive the message yourself. If you set it to true, then you will receive the message. I believe the default is yes. Um, and there are three types of data that you can send, text, JSON, and binary. And obviously, um, uh, that uh, uh, involves uh, the, the type of protocol that you use. So it doesn't make sense if, you're, if you are connected um, uh, with the uh, JSON protocol, it doesn't make sense to send out binary data and the other way around. Uh, and then data obviously is a, a data structure. Um, so in this case, we're communicating with data. So that's a, a, a JSON object that you can put in the um, uh, uh, data property. Send that to web ups up and it will handle it. Yeah, go ahead. The default type is text for the default protocol. Um, I believe so, yes. I'm not sure. But J JSON is also text. Yeah. Maybe Mark knows. Okay. So uh, this is what uh, sending a message in real life looks like. Uh, it says sending message, but it's not. It's actually um, making a connection and joining a group. Um, so what happens here is this, this is where I make a, a connection. And this is uh, uh, code copied and pasted from the demo that you saw earlier. So first, I'm going to have to explain a, bit, a little bit about how the system works, um, because um, it, it contains four services. One service is to identify you as unique users. Um, one is to create a session, and we are all in a session, including everyone um, uh, who is at home online. Um, and a session allows me to specify one or more poll questions. And a poll question is basically the question with, uh, uh, with uh, optional answer options. That's a strange sentence. Uh, with, uh, with answer options. So if I go uh, back to this um, uh, background system that I had. Yeah, so this, oh, still in the demo mode. So um, basically what you're now uh, looking at is my session and I defined two questions. And I can switch between those uh, uh, questions uh, and then uh, push them to your devices or change them or, uh, or whatnot. So basically, a session is a grouping, me grouping mechanism um, uh, for poll questions. And then the, fourth, the uh, third service is uh, the poll service. So that allows me to create uh, polls. And the fourth service is the voting service so that, that allows me to handle votes and process them in the background and then create this uh, very sophisticated graph. So when you join um, this demo, you basically join a session. Um, so I created a background service, this one, 
and there's a session controller, and that session controller contains an endpoint uh, slash real time. So this basically uh, is the ID of the session that you want to join, and then slash real time will bring you to this um, uh, uh, to this endpoint. And this is where uh, I basically generate that huge URL, but then programmatically. So I com communicate with a web pub sub through um, uh, a web pub sub service, uh, ser service client. And uh, with that client, I can go ahead and generate uh, a unique access URI. And in this access URI, I can define what this user can or cannot do. So in this case, I want everyone to be able to join uh, and leave groups for this specific session ID. And then the, uh, the URL that it generates is returned to the client. And my client in this case is JavaScript, so I can just go ahead and create a new WebSocket and then um, pass this URL in and it will make the connection to Azure Web Pubs up for me. All right, I, th I see that I got a little bit ahead of myself because of your question, provisioning and web pubs up. I already saw, uh, uh, demonstrated um, uh, provisioning web pubs up. So uh, that leaves me with costs. Uh, the cost between, uh, the, 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 there's no difference between uh, SignalR and web pubs up if it comes down to costs. So um, I already mentioned there are, uh, um, each unit allows up to 1,000 uh, connections. You can have a maximum of uh, 100 units, and the amount of messages uh, varies a little bit uh, if you use the free version, and um, uh, the standard and premium version are, are both uh, 1 million messages per day. Um, and it will cost you uh, 40 euros, around 40, a little bit less, around 40 euros per unit. So if you scale that up all the way uh, to, 1, 000, uh, to 100 units, it will cost you 4,000 euros a month. Then, show me the code. So, I already showed... Um, oh, this is the front end. So, this is my back end. I already showed you the way that I generate the URL on the back end. Um, and in my front end system, as soon as I uh, identify you as a unique user... Uh, so, let's go ahead and uh, dig into the front end. Um, so... Uh, as soon as I ident identify you as a unique user, uh, I make a request to this se uh, session ID slash real time, uh, and that will generate that uh, URL for me, and I will use that URL. Uh, where is it? Um, so this is where I want to uh, want to connect to um, uh, a web pub subservice. It goes to um, an endpoint uh, sessions and then the session ID and then real time and I will pass in the user ID so that I'm sure that your user ID is also stored in the JSON web token when I generate it. And when did this request completes, it will, go, uh, it will uh, call a method called connect socket, which is here. Uh, so this is the magic URL that the backend system generated for me. Um, and then uh, there's a little bit of magic going on, uh, especially for uh, iPhones, because if you switch context on, uh, and maybe also uh, iPads, I don't own an iPad or um, uh, iPhone, so I cannot test it very well. But if you switch context on, let's call it Apple devices, uh, then sometimes your connection is lost. So you, you need to take that a little bit into account. And um, uh, I came up with... Um, uh, yeah, a solution on the web page to be able to identify uh, that the focus on the web page lost, so I need to be able to reconnect. Um, and so that uh, this is why um, uh, a little bit of magic happens, and um, I want to see uh, if the session changed, uh, and if there's still a session, and if not, I need to do something different. Anyways, um, this is probably familiar code, because this is the one on the, uh, you saw on the slide. Um, so I just create a new uh, WebSocket, which is a native JavaScript, and that is where one of the advantages compared to uh, SignalR uh, comes from, because if you want to connect with SignalR, you can 
uh, also, by the way, I believe, uh, use a WebSocket, but if you want to take advantage of default scenarios, you're going to have to download a client library and use that client library to, uh, to connect to, um, uh, to SignalR. Um, and then your system is, um, uh, yeah, you have yet another package. Um, so using uh, native JavaScript is a, um, uh, an advantage here. I pass in the URL, I tell the system that I want to connect uh, with this protocol, so that allows me to immediately, you see that I am on line uh, 48, I handle the on open event, which, which basically uh, is an event handler for when the connection opens. Uh, so as soon as the connection opens, I uh, write the message to the log, uh, real-time connection to session, blah, 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 is there. And I immediately join the group for this specific session. Um, now, there's one downside that um, uh, PubSub has, uh, and that is that you cannot tell who is connected to the system or who is, uh, who is joining what group in the system. And I wish that there was a real-time system that could do that. So uh, basically, this is the, the beginner session of the evening. Uh, the second session of the evening is the advanced session. So uh, tell you a little bit about um, Abli. Uh, and if you want to be able to identify uh, users that have an open connection, Mark is going to tell you everything about it, I think. Maybe. Or at least, <laughs> or, or at least a little bit. <laughs> so then I uh, also catch another, uh, or handle another event that is on message. And that means if a message arrives and the system doesn't care if the message arrives because I'm a member of a group, because uh, the sender of the message targets everyone who is connected, or uh, user ID, it, it, it just means that a specific message that targets you in, which, uh, in whatever way um, arrives to the system, uh, and then you can handle that. And to be honest, um, I think this is one of the uh, best ways. There's not a bad. It's always ugly to to handle uh, such events because you're always going to have to do uh, a if else. If the message is if, uh, if the type of event that comes in is this, then do this. If it's that, then do that. So you you always end up with a bunch of ifs and elses, uh, or maybe switch statements uh, statements if you like. Um, I cannot find a sophisticated way to go around uh, that. Um, so yeah, this is ugly. Uh, if the type is message, then um, I want to do something. Uh, and if the, in case that uh, a new poll question is activated, that means that I want to show a new question with new answer options. So I need to do something. And uh, in case that someone who is also uh, joining the same session costs a vote that will uh, end up, that will result in changing the pie chart uh, and that message will be pushed to each and every one of you uh, so that they can uh, redraw the pie chart uh, with um, uh, the latest data. So how much time do we have left? Uh, 15 minutes or so. 15 minutes, okay. Um, I don't think there's that much to show uh, anymore. 15 minutes, no, 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 no. Um, I will just go back to my slideshow because we are at the end of my slideshow. And we, I think that we will use the, the uh, last 15 minutes for questions and um, uh, answers. So um, <laughs> I want to thank you for taking the time to listen to me. Um, if you want to contact me um, about anything, my contact handles are in the, uh, in the bottom left. I also wrote a book about infrastructure as code, so if you're interested in infrastructure as code, um, then um, again, my handles are there. Uh, and if you really want to learn it, then uh, buy my book, because it's valuable, it's great. I believe. Did you read it? Yeah, read it. Oh, it was you. <laughs> <laughs> now I know, so thanks a lot. Is there anyone that has a question?
Uh, yeah, my first question is about how to host. How, how many questions do you have? Two. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so my first question is, um, I understood that SignalR, you could have a, uh, an Azure service that will do that for you, like the hub, hosting the hub. Or you could actually put it in your own web app. Um, so you would not need a specific uh, or a special uh, Azure service. OK, got it. Um, I don't know if you can host it in your app. I know that you could do that with SignalR. Uh, but I don't think that it is the best way uh, to work with a real-time solution because uh, your website probably wants to scale up and down depending on traffic, as is your real-time mechanism or your, your, your real-time uh, system. Um, and you want these systems to be able to scale independently. And the only way to do that, as I see it now, is uh, by creating or, or, or provisioning uh, the service in the cloud. Um, to be honest, I didn't I didn't know about um, uh, hosting web apps up from your uh, application. Um, so so if you can and and uh, that works for you, then go ahead and do that. Um, the the only problem that I see is the scaling problem. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Um, okay. Uh, my my second question is um, like if you would. Um, if you would uh, use this to uh, implement a customer service um, chat, mm -hmm. um, then um, do, I, do you see the sessions? Uh, so each customer would actually have his own session with a chat operator? Yeah, so basically, yeah. OK, so a session is a term that I use in my demo um, uh, uh, in, my, in, my, in my, let's say, poll demo. Uh, it is not a signal of a signal or web pub sub term, but I believe that you, use, uh, that you want to use groups. Um, I, 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 I don't because know. The group would always exist of only two people, the operator yeah. and Yeah, so the basically the operator and you, and the operator will be able to target you uh, uh, using your uh, user ID. Right, and that would be your username if it's behind a login, then that would be your username. Yeah. So if you if, if you have a, a a system where users log in, you will be able to identify that user by his user ID, and the operator can target that user ID, and the uh, the user can target the operator back. Uh, so and, and if that doesn't work for you, it will be a good idea to create a group and make both member of the group. So you don't uh, need groups. Actually, Sorry? You don't need a group. You can also just you, target directly. You don't need a group, but um, thinking of it, I think that a, a group would be a good idea because it allows the operator to switch between groups. And then, um, uh, so I, I think that that is, in fact, uh, a pretty good idea. On the other hand, if, if the operator joins uh, one, uh, one group, you still need uh, this operator to be member of the other group and uh, process the incoming messages uh, because web pops up and signal are both don't have uh, a history so you cannot uh, ask the system to get me all the messages uh, that were sent uh, over the last 50 minutes and I wish that there was a system who could <laughs> does that answer your question yeah. okay no other questions Okay, so um, are we going to have a break? We're